Today I will discuss the quotient topology. First we shall prove a theorem which is needed to define the quotient topology. The theorem states that let x t be a topological space and y be a non-empty set. Let f be a, an onto mapping from x to y then the collection v consisting of all those subsets of y whose inverse image under f belongs to t is the largest topology on y such that f is t v continuous. Further a subset f of y is v closed if and only if inverse image of it under f is t closed. Let us prove this theorem. First we shall show that V is a topology on Y. So first we show that phi and Y belongs to P. As inverse image of phi under F is equal to phi and that belongs to the topology T on X. So phi belongs to V. As inverse image of phi under F belongs to T, so phi belongs to V. And since inverse image of Y under F is equal to X and X belongs to T, so from the definition of V, it is clear that Y belongs to V. Next we show that intersection of any two members of V is also in V. So take two members, let G belongs to V and H belongs to V. Then from the definition of V, F inverse of G belongs to T and F inverse of H belongs to T. And since T is a topology on X, so intersection of any two members of T is also in T. So F inverse of G intersection F inverse of H is equal to F inverse of G intersection H and this belongs to T also. And from the definition of V since F inverse of G intersection H belongs to T so G intersection H belongs to V. Next we have to show that union of any arbitrary collection of members of V is also in V. Let G lambda belongs to V for each lambda in capital lambda where lambda is an arbitrary index set. Then by the definition of V, F inverse of G lambda belongs to T for each lambda in capital lambda. And so their union since T is a topology on X, so union of its members is also in T. So take union F inverse G lambda lambda belongs to capital lambda and this is equal to F inverse of union of G lambda lambda belongs to capital lambda and this belongs to T. Since here inverse image of union of G lambda lambda belongs to capital lambda under F belongs to T. So by the definition of V, it is clear that union of G lambda, lambda belongs to T, belongs to V. So we have shown that union of any arbitrary collection of members of V is also in V. So all the three conditions of a topology are satisfied in V. So we can say that V is a topology on Y. As inverse image of any V open set is T open here we have constructed V so that F is continuous here G belongs to V if F inverse of G belongs to T. So we can say that inverse image of any member of V is open in X and so F is continuous. F is T V continuous. Next we show that V is the largest topology on Y. 
So consider some other topology on Y. Let V dash be another topology on Y such that F is T V dash continuous. Then we shall show that V dash is coarser than V. So we take some member. So consider some member G in V dash and since f is t v dash continuous so inverse image of any member of v dash is open in x so f inverse of g is open in x and by the definition of v f inverse of g belongs to t implies g belongs to v so here g belongs to v so we have shown that any member of v dash is also a member of V. So, V dash is contained in V or we can say that V dash is coarser than V. So, if we take any topology on Y for which F is continuous, then we find that that topology is coarser than V and so V is the largest topology on Y such that F is TV continuous. Now, Next, we have to show that for any subset f of y, f is v closed if and only if its inverse image under f is t closed. So, take f a subset of y. Then, we know that f is closed in y if and only if its complement is open in y or we can say that if and only if inverse image of complement of f belongs to t. Since this is open, this set is open in y, so its inverse image is open in x. So f inverse of complement of f belongs to t or we can say that if f is closed in y if and only if x minus f inverse f that is complement of f inverse f belongs to t. f inverse y minus f is equal to complement of f inverse f. This belongs to t that is f is closed in y if and only if f inverse of f is t closed since complement of f inverse f is open in x so its complement is closed. So f inverse f is t closed. Now we shall define the quotient topology. Let x t be a topological space and y be a non-empty set. Let f be an onto mapping from x to y then the largest topology on y such that f is t v continuous is called the quotient topology on Y related to F and T and it is denoted by TF and the map F is called the quotient map. The theorem we have just proved it is clear that from this uh, theorem that V is because we have shown that V is the largest topology on Y and so here in the above theorem, V is the quotient topology on Y and F is the quotient map. Now we shall discuss an example based on the quotient topology. Let T be a topology on the set X consisting of A, B, C, D and T consists of phi set AB, singleton set A, doubleton AC and set ABC capital X. So we have a topology on X and let Y consisting of PQR and F be a mapping from X to Y defined as image of A under F is P image of B under F is P, image of C under F is Q and image of D under F is R. 
then find the quotient topology on y. So we check inverse image of all the subsets of y and see the sets whose inverse image under f are belonging to t and then we can say that that set belongs to the quotient topology. First f inverse f is equal to phi, f inverse of phi is equal to phi and we know that phi belongs to t so we can say that phi belongs to the quotient topology. f inverse of the singleton p is equal to set a c here from the definition of f it is clear that inverse image of f is so inverse image of p is a b set a b because in image of a and b under f is p so inverse image of singleton p is set a b and here from the topology we can see that a b belongs to t so set p belongs to the quotient topology inverse image of singleton q under f is equal to here singleton c but c is not open in x c doesn't belong to t so singleton q doesn't belong to the quotient topology f inverse of singleton r is equal to singleton d singleton d doesn't belong to t so singleton r doesn't belong to the quotient topology f inverse image of set p q is a b c a b c and so and here we know that this is open in x and so this belongs to t so set p q belongs to the quotient topology inverse image of p r is equal to p and r so we can say that a b and t if we have set a b d but this is also not open in x so p r doesn't belong to the quotient topology inverse image of q r is set c d which is not open in t so set q r doesn't belong to the quotient topology and inverse image of p q r is clear that a b c d and this is open in x so p q r belongs to the quotient topology that is inverse image of y is equal to x which is open in x so y belongs to the quotient topology hence the quotient of topology on y is pf that is given by phi singleton p and set p q and set p q r that is y and so this is the required topology thank you